man, welcome JRPG fans back to the JRPG Report. If you cannot tell, I am fired up for episode 106. My name is James Fisher. As always, we are here for your weekly JRPG news and uh, other happenings around the world. It is a huge week for us here on the podcast. Um, we have got so many stories to talk about, but the one I am most fired up about, because it just came out uh, about an hour ago, as of this recording, it is April 1st, so I am <laughs> crossing every finger and praying that this is not some sort of really, really bad April Fool's joke, but thanks to Game Informer, um, yeah, they still apparently do things and put out a publication and whatnot. They are breaking today that it has finally been confirmed. Trails of Cold Steel 4 is coming to the West in the fall. Uh, NIS America did announce this. They are doing the publishing again on this title. Uh, no, nothing other than just North America and Europe in the fall. Uh, this is for PS4. Uh, Switch and PC will get it in 2021. That is as small of a time frame as you can, or as they have narrowed it down to. Obviously, the fall would be sometime, hopefully, in uh, September, October, November range. Uh, possibly in December, just depends on if something gets delayed or not. So it, it appears that my earlier hopes and dreams of getting this game in 2020 are finally going to come true. There were, uh, of course, <laughs> uh, two editions announced for it. Uh, the standard Frontline edition for $59.99. You get the copy of the game, the Black Records art book, Echoes of Ariabonia soundtrack CD, and reversible box art. Now, the Switch version will include a digital soundtrack. Will only include the digital down soundtrack as uh, the <laughs> uh, Switch cases are too small to hold a uh, standard size CD in it. Um, there is also a limited edition for it of course this is for either ps4 or switch and this will go for 99.99 you get the game collector's box twilight uh renaissance one disc soundtrack the complete black records hardcover art book ashen awakener steelbook or the ashen awakener steelbook daybreak cloth poster and seven art cards and uh, if you know me, that's probably what I'm going to be putting up for at some point in time. Here is the overview and uh, from NIS America. Here's the about. Now, the Erebonian Empire is on the brink of all-out war, taking place shortly after the ending of Trails of Cold Steel 3. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and just say there's every chance there could be some spoilers in here. If you've not played 1 through 3... I will try to keep it uh, keep it away, but forgive me if I let something slip. Uh, following the place of Cold Steel 3, the heroes of Class 7 find themselves against a full force of the Empire in an attempt to stop the path of total domination. Um, further, the hero of the Erebonian Civil War and Class 7's instructor, Reem Schwarzer, has gone missing. Now, the students of Class 7, old and new, must unite with heroes from all over the continent to create the only chance the world has to be spared from total destruction. Key features include the ultimate class reunion, boasting the largest roster in the series history. Heroes from all over seek to join the cause. The heroes of class 70 night with crossbell special support section, and even the heroes of libel. Model the battle most refined key feature. New and returning systems join the already polished combat of the legend of heroes series. Including the ability to summon giant mechs to the field for devastating attacks, use auto battle for more uh, expedient battle combat, and utilize lost arts, the most powerful orbital magic capable of turning the tide of battle. The last key uh, key point is a pursuits of the war weary. In between epic battles, catch a breather with a number of mini games, including the return favorites of Vantage Master, Fishing, and Puzzle Games. 
introducing new pursuits like poker, blackjack, and the horror coaster. So, yeah, <laughs> let me just stop and kind of uh, cash my breath. That's um, that's a lot to take into. Obviously, it does, you know, Reen is missing. There's nothing bad has happened. He is just uh, missing, and we'll keep it at that. You'll need to play through all of Part 3 to kind of know exactly what has gone on there. Um, I want to skim through the Game Informer uh, article as well. It did say that um, in this part, because I guess, I mean, you can tell war is breaking out. There is the break from the student life setting. So I don't anticipate there will be a lot of the um, little stuff that you're used to in this series. That's not going to not gonna be there. This is going to be more um, just streamlined. Uh, obviously, it's got a bunch of heroes that you are going to know and love. Coming in, in addition with the cross spell, and even sounds like we may get some of the characters from uh, Trails in the Sky may making an appearance in this one. Very, very cool stuff. There was a bevy of images that have come out. You'll want to shy away from the images and the announcement trailer if you've not played all three parts of this series at least. And there still may be some things in there that you didn't know from previous uh, games and other series. So I was fully prepared uh, to lead with a whole different podcast. But uh, like I said, this one popped up at the very last minute. And I could not contain my excitement any longer. It is great news for those of us who have been waiting a long time and tuned into various live streams to try to hear some announcements. And then we just get this kind of out of the blue. Um, like I said, the timing is a little suspect with it being on um, April fools. But I've, like I said, I've got this from game informer and then it's also been verified on Gametsu. So I seriously doubt this is some sort of prank. Um, one of the key things that's trending on Twitter. Like today I did say it was like no April fools. Like, <laughs> this year like yes we need jokes and uh funny things to kind of keep us away from it but at the same time like uh, don't don't make those april fools jokes that's like really tugging at our heartstrings to give us hope that it's just some sort of um uh misannouncement and not an actual an actual thing. So are you as excited as I am about Cold Steel? I know you are, Jake. You shared this with me on Twitter as soon as you saw it as well. And um, we're eagerly looking forward to it. So uh, let's just take a quick uh, second to compose ourselves. Uh, I believe I announced that this was episode 106. I don't know. I kind of just threw it all in there. Um, it's a huge week for JRPGs as yesterday saw the release of Persona 5 Royal. Um, I know there's more than a couple of you guys who are, maybe you're playing it right now and listening to the podcast. I'm not sure. Or maybe you're just taking a break yeah, from uh, from life and, and listening to the, to the podcast, taking a break from the game as well. So hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, I will quickly go ahead and tease this Sunday special. So we're going to be uh, talking all about Royal this week, and I've got it kind of prearranged, and we're going to go ahead and announce right here that me and um, uh, Dalton are actually going to have a conversation. He's playing it right now, um, super looking forward to it, and uh, he's going to kind of just give us his initial thoughts on some of the key differences he's noted. I want to kind of have a few questions I want to ask him. We may go into some more details, but... Um, that is going to be our Sunday special episode 11. And I will tell you, um, I did actually break down and go ahead and, and order this game. So here's what's going on. And I don't know, I haven't checked it today to see it or not, but I did just kind of get on Amazon and see what was going on. And apparently there may be some shortages with numbers because if you look at just the standard price for Persona 5 Royal, 
it's a hundred dollars to 110 right now people scooped up the special edition which was in short supply anyway you could have got it for 90 if you pre-ordered early i was seeing them going for almost 200 dollars on amazon so there's definitely some price gouging going on out there and my initial fear was when i want to get this game which was going to be as soon as i was done with the remake i may not be able to and and maybe it's crazy price. So I did go on to Best Buy and they've got the standard edition in stock and where they're kind of closed right now, they're doing either you can pull up and get curbside if you pre-order it online or order it online, they'll come and give it to you and they're, or they're actually doing free shipping on it. And I did it early this morning. And as long as you did it, I think before noon, you could get it delivered for free the next day. So that is what I did. I will be getting it on um, Thursday. That's uh, And I will at least have a chance to, to break open the copy. I don't know if I'm actually going to do that or not before I record the Sunday special. But if you guys are in the same boat that I was and you're on the fence, I would say go check out Best Buy and see if they still got any... Um, any copies in stock at your local store or GameStop. I didn't check on them or not. Just kind of want to give everybody a heads up of what my experience was. I don't like it, but that's the reality of the situation. And so this is what I did. Here was going to be our initial <laughs> lead story for the week. And uh, it was a part of the Nintendo Direct that took place um uh, back on the 26th and that is xenoblade chronicles definitive edition will launch probably sooner than you were expecting it's coming out may the 29th so that was the big big piece of uh news that came out of the direct there will be um there will also be the xenoblade chronicles definitive works set which includes a 250 page art book full of landscapes monsters and more there of course was the launch trailer to go along with that in both uh, english and japanese a bevy of good screenshots to go along with it here is the overview of the game in case you don't know if you're like you're si- like myself and you missed it when it came out on the wii you didn't want to buy a <laughs> uh, a new 3ds for one game That's a whole nother rant for another day. So here's the overview of it. Join the fight between man and machine in the definitive edition of this critically acclaimed RPG. Discover the origins of Shulk as he and his companions clash against a seemingly unstoppable mechanical menace. Wield a future seeing blade, chain together attacks, and carefully position your party members in strategic real-time combat as you journey across a massive world. During an attack from mechanical invaders known as the Mechion, Shulk discovers he can tap into the full power of a mysterious blade known as the Monando. With the mighty Monando in hand, Shulk sets out to defeat the Mechion once and for all. In addition to the Mechion, you run into wildlife that ranges from docile to deadly, keeping an eye on on what attracts monsters' attention to avoid unwanted conflict, or try your hand at bringing down an ultra-powerful, unique monster. Upgrade your party as they progress through the adventure by selecting equipment, enhancing weapon skills, and using benefit-granting gems. Put your dependable companions to work by filling the party gauge to trigger a chain attack and attack enemies in quick succession. I did check out the launch trailer for this one. Man, if you are interested in this one, uh, go onto YouTube and look up the previous trailer for this game on the Wii. And then look at this one. Wow. I mean, they have faithfully recreated the opening of this trailer uh, to match up what was in the original. And it is shocking how different it looks. It it looked like poo to begin with (laughs) back on the Wii. And it looks good on this one. It definitely is up to the same graphical quality as Xenoblade Chronicles 2. One of... My favorite games to come out in a long time. By far my favorite game on the Switch. So I am 
very much looking forward to playing this game. Assuming I can get the Switch away from my daughter for five minutes to play this one. <laughs> Maybe she'll be over Minecraft in two months. We'll have to wait and see. But definitely check out the trailer. It has some good looking stuff going on. It looks like it's a little more um, responsive and involved than Chronicles 2. And maybe that's a good thing, uh, you know, in uh, ZC2, you are definitely, it's more of an auto battle with you controlling the special attacks, which is fine. I, I don't mind that whatsoever. Um, this one looks a little more, although I can't really tell until I get hands on with it, but I'm excited about it. And come May 29th, we will all know how awesome this game is. I'll have some more information on the um, Definitive Works set when uh when they announce a little bit more about that pricing and maybe what's all involved as far as that go there was some other direct news but that was the um uh, the big stuff as it opposed to i don't think did they announce this one um i don't know if this was part of the direct or not but they did announce uh, pokemon sword and shield expansion pass that details the gigantamax rillaboom cinder ace and Inteleon. The Isle of Armor expansion is set to be due out by the end of June. So I, like I said, I don't know if that was part of the Direct in any shape or form or not, but it was definitely came out about the same time. Um, this article was the same day, so I'm assuming it was a part of that. There's a new trailer to go along with that as well. Um, so if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that, you can check out our Facebook page. The story is listed over there, as well as a link to everything that we talk about today. Um, I was also fully set to follow up last week's, um, if you notice the thumbnail for the podcast, it was talking about the end of Neptunia. Uh, here's the image that was behind the president absolutely showed the eight covers for Neptunia. It was absolutely, that's what it was. That's why I went with what it was. The end of a popular numbered series, you put two plus two together equal four. Well, apparently you don't in this one because it was not the end of Neptunia. It's the end of Mary Skelter. Uh, Mary Skelter finale has been announced for PS4 and switch in the latest and last episode of Dendeki PlayStation. Uh, Mary Skelter finale depicts the end of the jailbreak drama series that unfolded through Mary Skelter Nightmares, Mary Skelter 2, and the Mary Skelter short stories. The protagonist who is trapped in a jail, a living prison full of twisted creatures known as Marchians, aims to escape with the help of blood mains who possess special powers. Um... If you're announcing the end of a popular numbered series, I would think it would have had those images behind him, but it didn't. So rest easy, Neptunia fans. It certainly appears that this is what they were talking about. Um, we've got a release date, I do believe. Yes, it will launch on PlayStation 4 and Switch on August 27th in Japan and uh, there will also be a limited edition for it as well no news on a western release but I'm sure we'll get that along at some point there is a bevy of information trailers um, they're, they're talking about the six protagonists that are in it um, it includes the adventure mode which features both it, it this adventure mode will have both stories from parts one and two. So if you've not played the previous entries, you can just kind of pick this up here and get the end of it. But there are three stories in total going along with this. And of course you can check that out on the Facebook page. So I do apologize for last week. I maybe jumped to a conclusion that was, that turned out to not be correct. But I stand behind my reasoning for reaching that conclusion. Um, didn't mean to worry anybody. I do just try to report on things as I see them. 
and I'll be the first to announce and say that I made a mistake, and I'm sorry. But uh, moving forward, yes, this will be the last Mary Skelter, and I'm sure that we will hear more of the girls from Neptunia. In addition, of course, we're hearing about them right now because of PVV Tunia, the offshoot of the series from Neptunia, um, and detailed its TKMK Flash and Step Charm battle systems. Uh, the TKMK Flash battle system is available when playing as the Four Goddesses, and Step Charm is available when playing as the Virtual Idols. Uh, first for Flash, the four goddesses' bullets have the power to purify the hearts of the anti. By continuous attacking and maxing out the purification gauge, TKMK Flash will activate, which allows you to deal heavy damage, suppress powerful attacks, and even down enemies for a fixed amount of time. Uh, the Step Charm is uh, successfully performing a dodge action before an enemy attack hits. Step Charm will activate which will grant you infinite MP for a fixed amount of time, allowing you to use skills to your heart's content. Dodge enemy attacks while doing heavy damage with skill to come out on top in battle. VVV Tuning is due out for PlayStation 4 on July 2nd in Japan. Uh, there are a ton of other stories to talk about, and one of those is the other part of the um, I knew there was something else I was missing from the Nintendo Direct, and that is the Bravely Default 2 demo is now available. We got a new trailer to go along with that for the game, which is due out for Switch sometime in 2020. You can check out the demo uh, right now. If you head over to the eShop, here is the overview of the game. You'll step into a brand new world with four brand new heroes. A new world, a new story, and all new Heroes of Light await an original RPG experience arriving on Nintendo Switch in 2020. This is a successor to the original Bravely Default game, which comes from the team that brought you Bravely Default series and Octopath Traveler. will feature music from Revo, the acclaimed composer of the Bravely Default soundtrack. Of course, this is a brand new hit, uh, entry in the series. You will travel the world in search of the four crystals with the latest incarnation of the brave band known as the Heroes of Light. This is the latest creation from Team Azeno. Is that how you pronounce that? A-S-A-N-O. And brand new world filled with new characters, but with the atmosphere and excitement the Bravely series is known for. I certainly liked Bravely Default. I kind of just get... I get to playing games on the handhelds and I get tired of them more quickly or my interest goes back to, you know, a full fledged system. So I didn't actually complete bravely default and I never got a chance to play a uh, second layer either. I've heard nothing but good things about that one though. So I'm definitely looking forward to this one. And it sounds like you don't need to have played either of those two, two, you know, all the way through in order to get it kind of like, you know, Final Fantasies, you don't have to play the ones before it in order to get the full scope of things to come. Let's take just a quick break here, have a little breather, and I'll come back with one more big announcement along with a ton of other stories here on the JRPG Report, episode 106. One of the other big things that happened that we had talked about in the past couple of weeks was the near 10th anniversary uh, live stream. Two of those were paid events. Another one was free. We thought we might get a bit of information to come out of those. And I had speculated on this um, a while back. And it actually did end up uh, coming true. And they announced a new game. <laughs> And it is called, oh gosh, we're just going to call it Near Replicant. Okay. And then there, it's called version 1.2, lots of numbers. Uh, it was announced for PS4, Xbox One, and PC via Steam. This is an upgraded version of the third person action RPG Near Replicant and a prequel to Near Automata. Here is an overview of the game. 
a black scrawl disease and strange beasts threaten the world, a young, kind-hearted boy makes a promise to his little sister. A thousand-year lie that would live on for an eternity. In the year of the 10th anniversary of Nier, we are announcing the cult classic third-person action RPG Nier Replicant is to be rebuilt for PS4, Xbox One, and Steam as Nier Replicant version 1.2244, lots of numbers. Nier Replicant is a prequel of the critically acclaimed success Nier Automata. In the game, it invites players to into a dark, apocalyptic world as they join a brother's captivating quest to cure his sister of a deadly disease. A quest, which one turn make him question everything. Uh, it is a collaboration with Toy Logic, bringing together an all-star team, including claim director Yoko Taro of Dragon Guard and Near Automata, composer Akabab of Tekken, Dragon Guard, and Near Automata, and producer uh, Yusuke Saito of Dragon Quest X and Near Automata. The game is neither a remaster or remake, but rather an upgraded version of the game. Apples and oranges, right? I mean, <laughs> whatever you call it, it is what it is. Um, is a fully voiced, with all voiceovers re-recorded. The release date is undecided, but Square Enix hopes to release it during the 10th anniversary, which will be sometime this year various new elements have been added so it will feel fresh even if you played near replicant new characters will appear there may be a new ending the producer said even though he doesn't know all background music has been re-recorded there are also new songs and um the voice actress who voiced 2b in your automata and the voice actor who did 9S will have a small role in this game. There is a teaser trailer that goes along with it. The game looks pretty incredible. I've yet to still play Automata, but it is on my short list of ones to play through. That sounds like then you will get uh, another near experience sometime this year. Uh, speaking of Automata, its shipments and digital sales have now topped 4.5 million. This is a, another milestone for the Platinum Games developed action RPG. I would, I would guess nowhere in their wildest dreams did they think that this game was going to sell that well. Uh, they would have probably been happy with half that, or probably ecstatic with half that. So it has been a huge, huge boost to them and it when you start talking those type of numbers they had to make either <laughs> a true sequel to it or go back and re-release uh, the previous game also announced uh, because every game genre and uh, or game series has to have a mobile version or mobile game uh, iOS and Android has now uh, been announced the near reincarnation. Um, it will be produced by the same team um, and looks pretty darn good for a mobile game. Um, there is a short teaser trailer to go along with that. Here are the details of the game via Games Talk. Uh, Director uh, Saito said, I want to show everyone the actual game as soon as possible. At first glance, it doesn't look like a smartphone title. That's how much heart we're putting into this game. Almost as if we want it to be multi-platform. He said, we don't have to make money from it. If we can cause a stir, I'd be fine with it. Since it's near, that's our perspective in bringing it to the world of smartphones. I think of it as a new challenge in that sense. Even if we don't make any money from it and I get fired, he said, um, then he'll just go and join uh, the team that's led by uh, <laughs> Yoko Taro. Um, he thinks that they'll be able to show it soon. The only, um, yeah, they'll be able to show it soon. Um, yeah, it is, it looks good. And so by that logic, saying they don't need to make ma money from it, maybe it won't be full of microtransactions, that would be cool. Um, well, I'll wait to see a little bit more information about this one as it becomes available, but that's all we kind of know at the moment. A um, bunch of other 
smaller announcements filled uh, filled the airways this way. I, honestly, I could have made a podcast after all with all these small ones, but uh, it's really cool that we've of uh, yeah. I'm 30 minutes into the podcast, and uh, it was uh, nothing but big, big announcements. That's a good, good week. Uh, it has already been said that Gamescom 2020 will take place at least in a digital format coming up this August 25th until the 29th. The organizers did announce the same goes for DevCom 2020, which runs a week before that. Organizers will determine in mid May whether it can take place on site in Cologne, Germany, based on the latest developments. And, uh, well, you know, <laughs> uh, he said. If an on-site event is possible, information regarding the changes will need to be made to protect the health of all visitors will be announced. Currently, Gamescom 2020 plans are continuing at full speed. I, yeah, okay, that sounds like a long time from now, August, and so sitting here on April 1st, you'd be like, oh, yeah, surely, you know, by August we'll be able to do things again in normal I don't know. And if you heard, it said they need to make a determination by mid-May because that's the latest point in time that you can still carry forward with such an operation three months down the road. Uh, These E3s, uh, Gamescon, Tokyo Game Show, all these big, big gaming events need months and months, if not a full year to fully pull it off. I don't think it's going to happen. I think we're just going to look back at 2020 at all these big events as just not happening at this point. Um, being an American, the next big thing on our plate that is in question is going to be whether our football carries on uh, for college and professional NFL football. Uh, coming up in late August into September. That's a big question. We already heard that the Olympics have been postponed. Um, all spring sports are obviously are gone. Now, if those decide to come back in some capacity, not the Olympics, but like basketball, if we end up getting a season or baseball, then maybe other sports and things like Gamescom could possibly go on. But I just don't know. I, I'm already calling it right now. I would dare say it's going to be digital only. Tokyo Game Show will be digital only. And maybe that's not a bad thing. Um, it just gives them a different way of showing things to people. Um, I don't think it's a, necessarily a bad thing at all. Uh, we do have some remake news. Of course, we are a mere nine days away from... Um, April 10th and the launch of Final Fantasy VII Remake. But it has been reported that uh, games are going out early, which I don't necessarily understand. Um, but there's some reports floating around that players down in like Australia have already got the game. And so maybe it's a case to where uh, if a distributor has it and it's ready to go that they go ahead and push it out. But yeah, there's reports of people already playing it. Uh, Of course uh, there was some new um, (laughs) Japanese commercials came out for it and I don't understand any of them, but they certainly look pretty (laughs) humorous and interesting. You can check out the story on Facebook if you want to look into that a little bit. Um, more closely. So uh, here was the official announcement that remake will ship far earlier than usual to Europe and Australia due to distribution channels uh, being stirred up quite a bit. As a result, there is a greater chance that some of you in these regions will get a copy of the game prior to the world ride release. Uh, Katase and Noramama Nor. <laughs> Nomura uh, said for other Western regions, including the Americas copies will be shipped this week. And we feel optimistic that most of you will receive the game on launch day. I don't, I mean, it's fine. I don't care if you get to play the game a week early in Australia. I don't guess I don't care. (laughs) 
Um, I just don't quite understand, I guess, why. Yeah, they got it early, but why can't they wait to, to put it out in a week? Why they to, I don't know, whatever. So if you are lucky enough to be already playing it, why don't you head over to Facebook and say, hey, I'm playing it. Why aren't you guys playing? <laughs> um, one last piece of news. There was episode three in the developer diary for remake. This one's called combat and action. And this is, comes from, um, uh, still got interviews with producer, uh, to say now this has got battle director, Teruki Endo, uh, co-director Hamaguchi and lead battle designers, Sakane and Ochi. So this is the latest in that series. I'm not sure how many more of these are going to do. Maybe one more next week before they're released. I'd say that's probably all that we would see from that uh, from that series. Uh, there was another... There's two more pieces of Legend of Heroes news. I'm going to just kind of say this one. Uh, this is... We've got two previous stories on this one for uh, Hajime no Koseki, and this is the third story we've got on it, which details the third story arc of these characters. I'm going to not obviously not this week, maybe next week. I'm going to do a special Sunday special and <laughs> special Sunday special. Um, and it's going to be these three stories, everything we know so far about this game. I'm doing it as a Sunday special because you cannot read one paragraph into any of these stories and it not be filled with spoilers. There's things that I don't know because I've not played every single Legend of Heroes game up to that point. So even by doing this, I'll be spoiling some things for me, but that's okay. But by far, I think the most spoilers are going to be for players who have not played the Cold Steel series. Um, Cause that it's focused on the three groups, rings group, Lloyd's group from Crossbell, And now this third one, which I believe is new. Um, but yeah, just to be fair to everybody. And I think it'll be a full podcast anyway, but that way you can choose or not choose to listen into it. The game is shaving up quite nicely. They have one mechanic I can tell you about in particular, and I don't know how they're going to pull it off, but you, it sounds like you have the ability to jump from one story to the another, to another. Um, and in my mind, it made me think of Grand Theft Auto five with its three pro- protagonists. And you could jump from, from all three. Now, in that game, as you played it, there were certainly uh, many times where you could not do that. Um, like one of the characters would be busy or you had to stick with one character during this point in time. Not sure how they'll work out that dynamic exactly, but it did show one scene in particular from two different points of view in the story of uh, the two parties basically crossing each other. Look like on the streets of Crossbell. And one's how it would look from one story arc and one's how it would look from the other story arc. So that was very interesting. The game, Lord only knows when we're going to get it here in the West. Um, but I will tease that story maybe next week if, in fact, I think I can do it for the next Sunday special. Last bit of Legend of Heroes news. And that is the Switch version of Cold Steel 3 will come out on June 30th in North America and Europe, July 7th in Oceana, publisher NIS America announced. There was a new trailer that went along for the demo, which is available now on the Switch. Um, You can check that out as well. If you are holding off on Cold Steel 3 until it finally comes out on June 30th, in North America and Europe, and July 7th in Oceana. A couple more stories to get through for you guys. Um, Bandai Namco has released version 2.5 update for God Eater 3, and it has confirmed this is the final update for the game. There are there's a new standard mission which is added new missions to the extra sections. 
uh, extra episodes, certified missions. There's a new time attack mission, uh, some new special ones, Crimson Arland, abandoned God arcs, avatar additions, and bounce adjustments as well as bug fixes and some new screenshots went along with it as well so if you've been playing god of year three this version 2.5 update will be your last but you've certainly gotten quite a bit out of it and thanks to bend on emco for all they've done for the game up to this point the blue protocol closed beta test will run from april 23rd 1900 Japan Central Time until April 26th at midnight. Bandai Namco also announced the closed date was originally planned back in late March, but was postponed due to you know what. Uh, you should have an email notifying you that you have been selected for it as those went out on March 30th. From March 30th until April 6th, those users will be able to invite a friend to participate in as well. I'd be happy to receive your invitation if you want to send it to me, but I don't think I can. My PC can't handle it. <laughs> but thanks anyway. Um, Story of Seasons, Friends of Mineral Town, will launch this summer in North America for the Switch. And it will go for forty nine ninety nine. publisher Exceed Games announced. Pre -retail, retail pre orders will open, I believe they're open now. Um, at participating readers and will include a pocket plushie based on the in-game animal Strawberry Hanako as a pre-order uh, bonus. The July 10th release date was already announced for Europe, uh, so maybe it'll be sometime around then. Of course, the game came out last October in Japan. Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town is a complete remake envisioning Re-envisioning the charming and occasional mysterious world of Mineral Town with updated gameplay, graphics, and characters for the modern day. Core features of the Story of Seasons series will also make a return with full floor mining, multi-floor mining, and fan-favorite events like horse racing. There's a new trailer to go along with that. And uh, so you've got a, at least a summer window if you're looking forward to this one. Uh, we got some new screenshots and a new trailer for uh, Sakura Wars introducing combat. Um, here's an overview of the combat of the game. We take the reins as Shinjiro Hamiyama in Sakura Wars. Your challenges aren't only with your own Imperial Combat Review, but with also with every other combat review in the world. There's a big battle looming um, you and your squad have one chance to prove yourselves and save the legacy of the flower division by winning the combat review world games these games are intense dynamic tournament where combat reviews from around the world compete elaborate stage performances and battle with their giant mecha in the future there will be robots and plays <laughs> uh these were established with the hope it would foster a spirit of unity between the different reviews while also enhancing their public profile, allowing these heroes to take the spotlight and display their combat prowess to the populace. The Flower Division can expect particularly fierce competition from the combat reviews of Shanghai, um, Shanghai, London, and Berlin. The rules are simple, though the path forward is anything but. Every match is a three-on-three -three team battle spread across three rounds. You'll select two squad members who will fight alongside you. Each team score points will score points by defeating targets located around the tournament area. These points contribute to a tug-of-war-like gauge. Win by overpowering your opponent in that gauge or by scoring the most points overall at the end of the match. Of course, the game came out last December in Japan and will be due out April 28th in the Americas and Europe. Um, lastly, we did get another update for Genshin Impact because every week we get a new character announced for it. And this one is the Mondstadt character, Fischl. I guess that's how you say it. F-I-S-C-H-L. She is a mysterious girl who calls herself, uh, <laughs> quote, 
Prinzessin de Virgilung, <laughs> I guess she's German, and travels with a night raven named Oz, currently serves as an investigator in the Adventurers Guild. Though her unique abilities, eccentric character, and, while she would never admit it to herself, hard work, Feshel has become a rising star among the Adventurer Guild's investigators, earning the recognition of all. We've got a separate update for it, and uh, this one, of course, talked about her as well as details on Mondstadt and the Lari or Luri sections of the world as well. Um, this is Teviot. You've arrived in Teviot, which is a fantasy world where the seven elements flow and converge. In the distant past, the Archeons created mortals, unique elemental power abilities. With the help of such powers, people formed a bountiful homeland out of the wilderness. However, 500 years ago, the collapse of an ancient civilization turned the universe upside down. Through the calamity the world suffered has ceased, peace has yet to be restored. They talk about the world of Mondstadt, which is a city of freedom that lies in the northeast of the country. Cedar Lake, a natural freshwater lake, and looks quite pretty. The Falcon Coast, um, Cape Oath, the Dawn Winery, Springvale, a sleepy little village in the south of Mondstadt, the Thousand Winds Temple, and Lyru, which is the bountiful harbor that lies in the east of the country. That's what it's harbor. There's Mount Tynhang, a pride of mountain range that shelters Lyru Harbor from the west. Uh, they talk about Dayu Marsh, the Wangshu Inn, Quincy Village, something called Junikin, which are dazzling pieces that sit surrounded in mist and clouds, and more is coming soon. Uh, there was even a trailer announcement for official to go along with this and showing off some of the new world. Um, of course, the game is coming out for all platforms sometime in 2020, and we'll have another update, I'm sure, <laughs> on it next week, as we do every week. That's going to do it for episode 106. It has been a Extremely fun podcast. Lots of fun stories for you guys. Don't forget to check out our Facebook page, JRPG Reports, t- Twitter, or have our website, which has all the information um, on it as well. Um, trying to think what else. If you'd love to support the podcast, that'd be great. Listener support is available at the bottom of this podcast. You'll see a link for it. Or you can give me an email, JRPG Report at gmail.com and I'll gladly explain to you how that works. That'll do it for this week. We'll sign off for now. Don't forget to check out our Sunday special. We'll be talking all about Persona 5 Royal. Till next week, guys. Get back out there and level up.